Here I am with the Singer 431G combination. I will give you a brief preamble before I start to thread the machine. All of the 401 and 402, the 403, 411G, 421, 431G, and the 421G, 414G, they were all built in the Singer factory in Karlsruhe, Germany. These German-built machines weren't shipped to North America for sale. The U.S. had many big plants and Canada had the St. John's Quebec factory. The G models were brought here by immigrants, mostly, perhaps the occasional collector importing them. The other thing about these German singers is that Apart from the 401G, which is virtually, um, except for the, the bobbin setup, uh, which is virtually the same as the 401A, um, these other models, the, the 421 combo, the 431 combo, um, the 414, the, the 411G, they were made in, 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 smaller, in smaller numbers. They, uh, they weren't given, uh, you know, uh, they weren't given large lists of serial numbers to manufacture. And that's how Singer did it back then. They would give a factory uh, an order for either 50,000 or 300,000 or, you know, 500,000 machines. And when that quota was filled when that process was finished it was time to move on to another model but these are very unique and advanced for their time this machine i paid about a hundred and just around 110 american i paid a 150 canadian here in south shore montreal for this i paid 150 um the fellow that was selling it he couldn't get the hand wheel to go forward, to go this way, the correct way. He could only get it to, to go backwards. Underneath, when I bought the machine, brought it to my workshop, my living room, <laughs> which is my workshop, I checked it out. I oiled and greased it a little bit, and I got underneath. I'm not going to go into there right now. That'll be in another video. What I found under there was that somebody had put a, a felt liner inside the, the bottom cover, on top of the bottom cover, so that if any oil or dust or whatever fell down, it would drip down onto this very nice pink felt liner. What had happened was some of that had got up into the these the moving shaft coming from up here to from the gears up here to the gears down here and that is why when the hand wheel was turned this way that big piece of felt would get into the gears and it would jam it seemed very mechanical it seemed like it could be something mechanical in the the motor itself but when you turned it the wrong way, it would turn effortlessly and you could keep turning it backward. And then as soon as you tried to turn it forward, it would not, it would jam. So that's why I got it for 150. So a Canadian, 110 or 109 and change American. So, and I know I knew these were sought after in North America because they weren't built and sold here. But what I was surprised to, to discover uh, at IMAX, I M A C S, the Singer Sewing Information website from the UK was that these were actually made in small numbers. One of the big dif the, the big difference between this machine and the 400 series um, Canadian or American machines or even Scottish machines uh, is that. 
the bobbin device is on top rather than on the front here. These machines were, were built with the ability to, to uh, change them into uh, belt driven or pedal driven, treadle driven. So that's why the bobbin things are up here because that leaves room in here for a, a treadle belt, what have you. Uh, the other thing about this machine is that it has this fold up and fold down table extension. The other very attractive feature to this machine is that this part of the table can be removed and now you have a free arm machine that can be used for uh, quilting and other kinds of creative embroidery should you prefer. So this makes this type of machine very attractive to crafters and quilters and sewers of, of that nature. I have no doubt that if I decide in a few years to, to sell this machine, that it would command, uh, uh, you know, a, a good price. So the other thing about this thing is, oopsie daisy, oh gee, I'm glad I didn't break anything there. The other thing about this is that it has some extra, extra, uh, presser plates and this one is used with chain stitching because these mach this machine will chain stitch. I also got there are also a number of uh, other uh, plates and feet. There are also four cams that can go up here in the uh, underneath the stitch chart here on top of the cover and these special discs can go right there. Now, this one would have to be, you'd have to unscrew this top. I have to see how that actually works. There, it works like that. I hope that's the way it was supposed to work. So I might have to do a little repair there. Let me compare to the other ones. No, they don't have this little spring in there. So I think actually that this is supposed to stay on this.